seconds away on Studio 5. The word tells us that if any two of us shall agree on anything on earth, that God will do it for us. James Fortune went from Grammy-nominated singer to jail time. We're five days in jail for you, Minister of Music, like. And for the first time, he's opening up about domestic violence and the road to healing. This was something that was difficult for me because... Plus... We have chosen Jeremy. I wanted to be the Spanish Justin Bieber. <laughs> um, but uh, that, uh, that, that uh, God, God quickly um, humbled me. He wanted to top the pop music charts, but one conversation rerouted his career and his life. I called my manager that night and I told him, We're not, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm not chasing mainstream shows. Cancel everything you got. Studio 5 starts now. And I know sometimes life has a way of knocking you down to the point where you can't even pray for yourself. But today, I want to agree with you that it's getting ready to get better. And right now, we are giving your problems an expiration date. And we're saying it's over, that you've been crying long enough, that you've been worried long enough. That been... That's music from gospel recording artist James Fortune. Welcome to Studio 5. James Fortune is famous for his award-winning singing and songwriting. But earlier this year, he made headlines for charges of domestic violence. We're going to sit down with him for a candid conversation right here in his hometown of Houston, Texas, in just a bit. But first, let's take a look at the rundown for this week's uplifting entertainment news. It is your Studio 5 Top 5. Coming in at number 5. From the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James at the White House. To the Late Late Show with James Corden. And even Sunday morning church service. Everyone is getting in on the mannequin challenge. It's the latest viral craze where you freeze and then... Unfreeze! Still not quite as cold as the ice bucket challenge. On to number four. Israel, you don't get to see it until I walk down the aisle. Talk show host Adrian Bylone has walked down the aisle and married worship leader Israel Houghton. People Magazine released this exclusive snapshot from their wedding ceremony in Paris Friday. The couple shared some of their wedding preps on Adrian's talk show, The Real. We want it to look aesthetically stunning, yes. like a wow, like a showstopper moment. And then we want it to taste aesthetically stunning. Exactly. Best wishes to the happy couple. Now to number three. VidAngel gives you and the little cherubs freedom to filter out any mature content you don't want to see. Disney is leading a battle against the family-friendly streaming service. So far as we can tell, they want to put VidAngel out of business. But VidAngel supporters are fighting back, investing $10 million for its legal defense, writing more than 8,000 support letters, and more than 16,000 emails. There's a feeling in the air and a sense um, among the people who use VidAngel that um, Justice is, is on our side, ultimately. We just need to get there. The first court hearing was this week. We have new music at number two. We go anywhere, yeah. more fight than it, no pressure. Yeah. Want my ego below zero when I'm humble, I'm better. This is hip hop recording artist Trip Lee's new single, Too Cold. It's about the importance of being bold and standing firm in one's faith. You've been at this rap game now how long? About 10 years. 10 years. About 10 years, yeah. Um, I signed a record deal when I was in high school. His new single is part of his new mixtape, The Waiting Room, set for release on December 9th. A much anticipated follow up to his album and his book titled Rise. In this particular book, I just really wanted to address the crazy idea in our culture that while we're young, we're not that. Our life and decision making isn't that important yet. Or that we can't make big impact for God. Or that God doesn't expect that much from us. That could not be more false. At number one this week, they're back. Red leather, yellow leather. All right, excellent. Red, yellow, le red no. leather, yellow. Shut up. <laughs> I can't believe they actually give college credit for a grown-up version of Simon Says. 
Duck Dynasty is back for its 11th season starting this week. And Studio 5 is sitting down with Willie Robertson to talk about the new season and his new book, The American Fisherman. Hey, I'm Willie. Well, hey, my name's Obey. Did you say Obey? Yes. We almost named John Luke Trust. Obey. Mm-hmm. And that is this week's top five from Studio 5. Flashback to 2012 and James Fortune found himself being celebrated, nominated for two Grammy Awards, Best Gospel Album of the Year and Best Gospel Song of the Year. Just two years later, the Billboard chart-topping artist found himself in jail, arrested on charges of domestic violence. Well, earlier this year, here in a Houston courtroom, the punishment for that crime played out, and so did the headlines. James Fortune is speaking out for the very first time, and he is this week's Studio 5 interview. James Fortune's music has topped the gospel charts for more than a decade. Ministry was my life. You know, it's all I've known. I started playing the drums at five years old. Fortune is a preacher's kid from Houston, Texas. He's recorded seven albums, earned two Grammy nominations, and performed for packed crowds around the world. But in March, this singer and songwriter traded those venues guilty. for this courtroom where he pleaded guilty to assaulting his wife. You've been given five years probation. Yeah. Spent five days in jail. Yes. What were five days in jail for you, minister of music, like? I can't imagine any more than that. I mean, it was rough. I had a lot of time to just think. You know, I had a lot of time to think, why, why am I in here? What, what am I doing? You know, because I, I've sung in so many prisons. I've ministered in prisons. You know, we've gone to prisons and, I mean, maximum security prisons and shared the gospel and ministered. And now, you know, here I am as, as, a, as a, an inmate myself. And you did 175 hours community service? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm still doing Still them. doing that. Yeah, and still, what does that involve? Whatever the city needs, picking up trash, cutting grass. It's, it's, not, it's not just chilling, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's not, I mean, you're right, it's Texas, Houston in the heat, so. James and his wife, Cheryl, are legally separated and can have no contact for the next five years. She isn't speaking publicly, but issued this statement to him in court. I hope in all of this you get help serious help. Although this probation might be like a slap on the wrist, I hope you look at it as a moment to better yourself and change something within you for your future. In terms of, of what happened, there are reports that you threw her against a wall, hit her with a stool, threw her out of the house. Were there any broken bones? There were no broken bones. There were no internal injuries. There was no broken pelvis. Those reports were false. Um, her being beat with a stool was, was false. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, like I said, I did put my hands on her. I did um, physically uh, restrain her and remove her from my room. This was something that was difficult for me because a lot of people were saying, you know, don't talk about it, you know, just kind of just let it, let it go and, you know, let people forget about it, hopefully, and move on with your life. But as I was praying, just my spirit that didn't sit well with me. And God was like, I want you to share your story because domestic violence is something that the church doesn't talk about. And so I'm basically stretching out saying, you know what, I was a perfect portrait of, a, of domestic violence. I was an abuser in more ways than one, uh, but I believe that's how God is healing me. Instead of just believing and praying, James is fully involved in the healing. Since the 2014 assault, he has been in therapy and allowed our cameras to follow him to a meeting. I've learned a lot more now since I've been in therapy. Um, for almost 18 months. Uh, I thought domestic violence was just, you know, if, if you hit your wife or if you, you know, slap your wife, but I found out there's so many, there's 18 forms of abuse and only one of them is physical. So I, it didn't start with physical. Um, that night, that's what caused me to be arrested, obviously. Um, but there was other forms of, of, of uh, abuse that I was a perpetrator of, intimidation, male privilege. You're certainly not a victim in this, but what all have you lost as a result? You can't even put a number on it, you know, because even now there's so many churches who just don't want to, um, don't want me in their church. You know, they don't want to have anything to do with, um, with my ministry. Um, a lot of concerts were canceled and who knows just the, the, the concerts that were, were potentially there that people say, you know what, no, we can't, um, we can't have anything to do with that name. Um, but that, that hasn't been my focus. There was a time when I didn't even think I would get to this place of um, to feel um, the way I feel now. Uh, there's a place where it seemed like there was no light at the end of the tunnel. You were suicidal? 
I, I, I started off taking antidepressants just to help me sleep because I hadn't been getting any sleep um, for days upon days. Uh, so I was taking them to basically just get some rest. And I started uh, just feeling so guilty for what I had did, bad choices that I had made in my life. Um, and I just didn't feel like I had anything to live for. So you have a bottle of pills that you're thinking I'm gonna take and just end it all. Yeah. What stops you? Um, people were praying for me. So many people uh, were letting, letting me know that James, you know, it's not over, it's not the end. Uh, many pastors, uh, many Christian leaders around the, around the country and around the world uh, were reaching out to me. But you get to a point to where you're like, you know what, I don't even deserve forgiveness. I'm out of the reach of grace. For me personally, it was remembering even my grandmother's prayers, you know, praying for me as a, as a, as a boy. And, and God kind of told me something. He said, James, prayers don't expire. What's been the most difficult part? For me, the most difficult part is um, the separation, you know, um, from my family, mm. um, you know, even my children, you know, to not know exactly why um, their father is not around as much as he used to be. And trying to explain that to them and let them know that, you know, I, I just made a horrible choice. Fortune spent six months separated from his four children. Oh, can you get it? These days, he's with them at least once a week. James Fortune isn't ready to return to the recording studio full time just yet, but he is still writing music. He'll share the story of a song that was birthed in this dark time in his life when the Studio 5 interview continues. Still to come on Studio 5. You fell in love with him on American Idol, but where is he now? Went through a pretty rough record deal situation where things kind of just fell through. God has really blessed me with the situation I'm in right now. Studio 5 is sitting down with Jeremy Rosado. James Fortune has shared with us that some bad decisions in life cost him dearly. In fact, at one point he was ready to take his own life, commit suicide, right here in the city of Houston. But one thing he says saved his life, prayer. That reality gave birth to a song. And that's where we pick up our conversation in part two of this Studio 5 interview. I know how God's able to, to take you out of what you thought was your most traumatic and, and difficult season and birth something out of that that just totally blows your mind. Has God birthed music out of you in this season? Yeah, that's that's been there a lot of therapy for me as well. Just writing, you know, I'm a writer. I'm a songwriter. I'm a uh, so I've written so many songs through this journey. That includes this Thank one. You. Prayer saved my life. This one's personal. Have you ever needed someone to pray for you? Have you ever needed someone when you were going to encourage you? posted on social media, please pray that during this process, God continues to perfect and restore me so that I'll become a better man, father, and Christian. Yeah. What's this process been like? I'm going to be honest. The process has been very, very um, beyond my expectations. My eyes have been open. Yeah, it started out rough. Yeah, I was suicidal and didn't think I had anything to live for. Didn't think my life had any more purpose. I'm like, you know, uh, it's, it's over. But to see how God just is able to keep me every day. I just kept going to sleep and waking up, just kept going to sleep and waking up, believing that change was gonna come. As I've shared, I share with other people what God has been doing through my life. So many other people are reaching out, and a lot of men are reaching out, but so many women are saying, you know what, we always hear the victims talk, uh, but we never hear the perpetrators speak Absolutely. about where, where this comes from and why this happens and, and how it's not their fault. So the process has been something that I would say was, was necessary. I can remember as a boy walking in on my grandmother and she'd be on her knees interceding for her family. Now she's no longer here, but because prayers don't expire, I believe some of those same prayers are carrying me through the day. If you're grateful that somebody prayed for you, listen. Thank you for praying for me. Save the Chandra. Thank you for covering me. Covering me. Thank you for loving me. Your prayers, your prayers save my life. Thank you. 
That song, Prayer Saved My Life, is available online free of charge. Still to come on Studio 5. See what happens when this American Idol alum takes the stage. And learn how Jennifer Lopez and Donnie McClurkin shaped his recording career. Jeremy Rosado rose above thousands of contestants to land one of the top spots in season 11 of the hit series American Idol. The young Florida native is making the rounds around the country, singing music from his Heartbeat Project. I caught up with him to talk about his musical journey. So when you told your family that you were going to sing and go on American Idol, and I think you told them that long before you... Mm -hmm. was actually, 10. You were 10. Old. Yeah. And when you actually went on, how old were you? <clears throat> yeah, I was 10 years old when I saw Kelly Clarkson win American Idol. Never heard of the show before. I was literally flipping through channels. Um, one night, it was probably like 7, 8 o'clock at night, and I heard Ryan Seacrest saying, the winner of American Idol 2002 is, and then he said, Kelly Clarkson. I saw her win, and I saw, I, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I connected with this, in, in, like, instantly. And I said, I literally ran out of my room, 10 years old, I said, Ma, Come here, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be on the show. You see the name on the bottom? You're gonna vote for me like it says that. So I started watching the show with my parents. Like, I mean, we watched it every single, every single time it was on. I auditioned when I turned 16, auditioned when uh, I turned 17 twice, I auditioned when I turned 18, I auditioned when I turned 19. So this was my fifth audition. So I did five auditions for Idol. For the first time in the history of my auditioning, they said yes, and I, I they said yes one, then they said yes the next day, then they said the yes again, one more yes, and then I was in front of the judges. Some people are just blessed with a voice from God that when they open their mouth, they, they affect people. That's you. America, meet Jeremy. Jeremy, meet America. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you, man. Who is your wild card pick? I gotta show them everything that I have in this one moment, and I just want everybody at home to be able to feel everything that I sing. I believe in this kid. I believe in Jerry. I think he has one of the most beautiful voices I've heard in a long time. Who is it going to be? Jeremy Rosario. <laughs> What's What's life been like? after American Idol for you. It's been a few years. You know, American Idol, it really changed up everything for me, opened up doors that I would have probably never had before. Um, went through a pretty rough record deal situation where things kind of just fell through. God has really blessed me with the situation I'm in right now. And it wasn't easy getting signed. I mean, I, I came off one of the biggest TV shows probably in the world, um, but it was definitely uh, having to work tremendously hard to, to make it happen. You're album has been out. I am so blessed with the record. It's called Heartbeat. Um, it was a labor of love. It was, uh, I don't, I don't want to say blood, sweat, and tears because there was no blood, thank God. But, um, <laughs> there were sweat and tears. There were sweat and tears. It was a lot of sweat and tears. How does your life's reality compare to what you dreamed about, what you were hoping for? Man, you know, I wanted to be the Spanish Justin Bieber. <laughs> um, but uh, that uh, that that uh, God God quickly um, humbled me. You know, coming off the show, if I, if I'm honest, um, I remember doing an event with Pastor Donnie McClurkin in New York City, and um, I uh, I was just uh, he was interviewing me for something. And we were speaking, and and I remember my heart was just not. It wasn't this right here. I wanted to chase this mainstream world. This was immediately after Idol. And um, it was it was right there. I, I really believe the Lord gave me a word. Do you remember what he said? It was something along the lines of, you know that I've called you from when you were a little boy. Why are you running away from what you know you're called to do? Just right there. Wow. I, I knew that it was the Lord, dude, and, and um, speaking. And um, yeah, that, from that day on, it changed everything. Still to come on Studio 5. The sun was shining on you. The Lord was smiling on me. A sneak peek at our conversation with the architect of the love song. It's your first look at next week's show. 
And we are just about out of time for this show, but the work never stops to bring you good, uplifting entertainment news. Let's take a look at what we're working on for next week. He's a Detroit native son whose music career is the ultimate story of rising from the ruins. You've been sober more than 20 years. Right. Do you ever get tired of talking about that? part of your life being homeless and addicted to drugs? No, that's our, that's our testimony. I'm sitting down with Grammy-nominated recording artist Kim. People need to know that, um, that they're, they're not doing this by themselves, that they don't have to do this by themselves. It's an uplifting interview and an episode you won't want to miss. And that is just one story from next week's rundown. As for today's show, I'm giving the final word to another inspiring Texan. You've heard James Fortune talk about the power of prayer. Well, Bible teacher and actress Priscilla Shire has a message about the undeniable power of getting on your knees. Paul mapped out for us in Ephesians chapter six, this spiritual armor. He's like, if, if you have this on, you will be victorious. You know, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit and on and on. And most of the time we stop at those six pieces of armor but right at the tail end of that, he says over two verses, more, more biblical real estate than the other pieces of armor. He says, pray, pray at all times in the spirit on every occasion for all the believers. He goes on and on and on about prayer as if to say, this is the seventh weapon. And this seventh weapon is the one really that infuses the other six with the power that they need to actually be, effect be um, effective in battle. So uh, more than anything, I. I think that the Lord is trying to remind his people that if you'll just pray, I will hear, I will heal the land. Prayer is the key he has given us to unlock all the power of heaven so that he can, he's just waiting to release it, but somebody's got to use the key. Prayer is no doubt part of your armor and you should never go to war or battle without it. That is the final word for this edition of Studio 5, coming to you from Houston, Texas. Until next time, reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye.